please tell me about yourself. Um, well, uh, my name is Hafsa uh, Um I am a teacher by profession and I've been teaching for the last three years now. Um, although I, uh, my parents belong to Pakistan, I've been living in um, Saudi Arabia for a very long time. Uh, if you ask about my, uh, if you ask, uh, ask about the things which I do, I love reading, I love to interact with people. Moreover, I'm a person who is uh, very much enthusiastic about um, traveling. So I'm a person uh, who would uh, love to read travel blogs. And whenever I used to have time uh, in the earlier days, I used to plan some trips with the family members. Next question, please. Right. What is your education? Um, well, uh, currently, I am... Um, I'm just, um, I've, I've done masters uh, in, in English literature. However, I'm a person who wants to, uh, who believes in uh, constant learning. I'm not a person who would just say that, okay, I've done my masters and I don't, uh, I don't seek knowledge anymore. Uh, for instance, if I talk about myself, I've gone through a very rigorous ice preparation course lately in order to prepare myself for my uh, further education. Other than that, I've done, um, a diploma in ELT. I've also done some sort of uh, short courses related to um, teacher training and all that stuff. So I'm a person who I wouldn't say that what like if you will ask me about my education after two or three uh, months, you'll just find me um, adding something more into my education. So um, like whenever I get my salary, whenever I'm uh, whenever I get some sort of money, I'm, I just actually reinvest it. I uh, I tend to, I, I tend to augment my um, soft skills. I love to add skills to my current skills so that I could be a better teacher. So my education is um, right now masters officially, but formally. But I tend to gain um, some sort of knowledge all the time. Right. It is easier to teach children or teenagers. Why? Um, since I'm a person who would be regarded as adept, uh, or since I'm a person who would be regarded adept at teaching children, I guess I'm more like, uh, I'm more comfortable with children now. Um, I think uh, both have their pros and cons. If I talk about children, um, they, they are not very much adamant. Like they have, uh, they have a constant belief that they have to learn and their parents are also making them learn more. Although they might be having more questions, they never they never say, "Okay, we don't, we're not going to do it." They're not very lethargic. But I've also um, I've also experienced something for teenagers. Like I think it was only for a summer school that I taught for two or three months, and it was not an official tuition. It was more like an online tuition, which I was giving to someone who I knew personally. Teenagers uh, tend to believe that whatever knowledge they have is enough. It's enough that that is ample. So it's very hard for them to make them realize that they have to work more. They, they tend to procrastinate a lot. Like I used to give them homework and they used to come up with all kinds of excuses like, okay, no, we, we don't want to do it today. We'll do it for after two, three days. We'll do it after four or five days. So it's it becomes very, very, very hard for a person like me to just teach someone when that person is not that much passionate about learning. For me, Fine. I would say teaching children is easier. Okay. Fine. Do you believe that education is more important than experience while teaching? Um, like, if I ask someone in my country, they'll perhaps say that, uh, or right now I'm studying in Saudi Arabia, and people would say that, yes, education is very important. But, it, but I like, no matter how practical your education is, no matter how good your education is, your education can never teach you the things which you can uh, acquire from practical learning or from practical teaching. Um, like if I compare my 18, 16, 17 to 18 years of education to my three years of teaching, I think that I've actually learned more by teaching than by learning. As a teacher, like you, you are a person who's asked like 12, 13, 15 questions in a lecture, in a short lecture. 
every time a question is asked a person or a teacher has to deal with that question in case the teacher does not know the answer to that question that teacher has to study in order to answer that question so i think um, education is important however um, teaching or the teaching experience a person would be acquiring is much more important because you know what the real problems are you, you would be knowing about the obstacles people would be having while they are trying to uh, acquire education so practical practical um, i would say practical experience is much more important than the theoretical one right why do you decide to become a teacher um, even though my parents wanted me to join family business i decided to become a teacher i think there are two basic reasons for it first of all uh, this is a profession which is a very respectable one and i am a person mm -hmm. who needs uh, a lot of respect i don't want people to call me to call me by my first name i don't want people to insult me in case i was doing some sort of business i would be talking to people and i would be like i i want i want i want respect to be given uh, whenever someone is talking to me or whenever mm -hmm. someone is communicating with me so this is i believe uh, the after like after uh, after doctor or i would say perhaps the um, the most respectable uh, profession um, in the world because uh, it uh, the the significance and the status of pay, uh, the teachers uh, has been considered tantamount to parents so i think that that is uh, that is uh, if you are if you're comparing your parents to your teachers or you're saying that they deserve the same kind of respect there's no other thing which you have to say in order to justify the fact that it's a very respectable profession moreover i i used to be um, i used to have some sort of fantasy whenever i used to see my uh, teachers i i i love to be in command i don't want to be a person who is just doing what other people have to do even if it is a small lesson even if it is small lecture i want to decide things and when you become a teacher you basically someone who is deciding a lot of things so i al always wanted to be in a power i wanted to control things and i, I believe that this was uh, this was a, this is a profession which has not only given given me the power to enlighten people but it has also given me the self respect which i wanted like if i am doing some other job i don't think i would ever have the liberty to decide mm -hmm. what kind of methodology I, i should be doing what things should i be doing but when i when i became a teacher i now have the power to change the world and i can enlighten the minds of children i can make a difference in this world and some people might believe that it's uh, it's not a very productive profession but for me uh, for my experience uh, even if i had to live my life again or start my life again i would still become a teacher right uh, what motivates you the most while you are working well um again i think that three or four things which motivate me a lot um the first mm -hmm. thing is the grades of the children um like i believe in academic excellence although i am not someone who would push them to the extent of making them feel bad i believe a child should be getting very good marks or else all the effort the child and the teacher has put would go on to waste so the 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 entire um, i would say the entire um, process of learning would be of no use in case there is no there's no academic result Uh, in order to uh, there's no good result to warrant that kind of effort secondly i love it when my students ask me questions it's it's my way of knowing that they are trying to learn something if uh, the, the students are not going to talk the class will not be a very interactive one and that is something which will lead me to towards that would uh, that is something which would uh, lead me towards boredom so i love when children are asking me questions the third thing is right. i think uh, when i'm working i also want some sort of encouragement from my management like there have been cases when parents were complaining about the teachers and once they also complained about me that i was giving a lot of homework but my management mm -hmm. what i remember from my management stance was that they said that 
if we are not going to give them homework or if we are if you're not going to make them learn more or do more they would ultimately become lethargic they might not work at all and that is something which we cannot tolerate in the school so um, i want my management to support me whenever i'm trying to do something in order to make a better learning experience i'm not someone who's a dictator i'm not someone who's very much adamant but i'm very much strict about the homework or the tasks which i want students to complete right how are you different from other teachers um it is very hard to say this i think every teacher um has to go through the struggle of um making children learn more the the child uh, has every every student has a different problem every teacher has to cater to that problem in a different way i wouldn't say that i'm different from other teachers but i would say um what i have been told from other students is that i don't i don't give up very easily for instance if there is a class which is of one or two one hour uh, and someone was not able to understand something i would always give an extra class and that extra class is something which i would not only make available to the students who were having problem but also for those who were having uh, under who were having a good understanding of the problem so i tend to give extra classes i tend to make myself available for the students because um when when you and in that class i tend to give individual time i come to students individually what happens is that some people have a lot of problems related to their confidence so sometimes students are not understanding but they are very much reluctant to talk about those problems because they feel as if they would be humiliated in the class so they feel that they are in a very much vulnerable position in the class so i just give the extra class so that everyone could understand that we are all here for learning right do you ever struggle while teaching well uh, i do um, if, if i would say i never struggle um, i do struggle but i always want to get a, a solution to that problem like um, if i'm trying mm -hmm. to teach a chapter and if a student has not studied the mm -hmm. last chapter and that the chapter which i'm teaching them is dependent on the last chapter i'll have to make them learn more sometimes i have days when i uh, i i'm frustrated by the lack of interest students are showing towards their work but i can tolerate myself and that is the thing whenever you have problems you have to deal with those problems and whenever even like uh, as a teacher i know that most people would say no we don't have any person struggles and we don't have any person problems and we never bring those problems to the classroom but sometimes even if you're not bringing those problems to the classroom um, like perhaps if there is uh, some sort of uh, person problem at home you might be having that thing in my mind so i whenever when, as soon as i enter the classroom i just want to get rid of all those things which are happening in my life so that i could concentrate on those things there were times in my initial 2 or 3 months of teaching when i used to think about other things when while i was teaching but that is something like after teaching for for the last 3 years i've been able to overcome this problem and now i've overcome it entirely now i, I if you are going to have your own problems while you're teaching you won't be able to uh, solve the problems of the students so you have to just eliminate those problems and that is something which can only happen through experience no book no degree can teach you that right how do you deal with the problem students um if i uh, if i talk about um problem students um i'll just talk about a very uh, unique character um like uh, it's th there are cer certain people who are who are called passive aggressive uh, let me just explain it to you um there are some cer mm -hmm. certain students who are passive passive students or passive learners are the ones who will not say anything you'll say you'll ask them to do something and they'll say okay fine uh they'll just do it they'll not they'll not be speaking a lot in the class there are some mm -hmm. aggressive communicators aggressive are those who are talking about the problem area they were talking about all those things 
who believe that they are in uh, command. They sometimes even want to control the class. But there are certain problem students, and I think those are uh, very much uh, like passive aggressive students. Those are the students who are constantly bickering. Those who would not, who would have different words and would, and would have different emotions. They'll say, okay, teacher, we are understanding. They'll say, teacher, we, we like you a lot. But as soon as you'll turn your back, they'll just start talking bad about you. Mm -hmm. so I don't like those kind of students and I regard them as problem students because they keep on uh, giving out their sarcastic comments. They talk bad about other students. So my way of dealing with these kind of students is that I first of all have to ask them what the real problem is. Most of the time, they're not having problems in the class, in the school. They have some sort of personal problem. So um, even if I will have to do it after the school, even if I, I will have to do it in the classroom, I will just talk to them in order to know what has caused them to become the person they have become. Like, uh, for instance, if I'm teaching them uh, speaking on one day, they'll say, no, you teacher, you told us that we'll be doing reading today. So they, they're just complaining mm -hmm. about everything which is happening. So I just tend to talk about what their problems is. I'm not someone who's very harsh and durish enough to make them leave the classroom. I don't complain about them. I just try to ask, talk to them personally because whenever I talk to them, I just find out that they were having some sort of issue which they were not able to share with anyone. And when I when they were able to share it with me after that, the, their, their personality or I would say their way of behaving um, improved. Right. What different methods do you use to impart knowledge? Um, the, I, I, I use all the conventional methods, like um, I have my books, which are the official textbooks. Uh, moreover, mm -hmm. we believe, um, I believe in worksheets. Um, all these are part of, like, all, all this is related to the, uh, all, all this is related to the syllabus or the curriculum which the school has designed. So I'm not going to impose mm -hmm. certain things, uh, but, um, and it also depends on the school. For instance, if the school is a very uh, advanced school, it is, if it is providing technological um, devices, if it is providing other features which will facilitate learning process, I would be using them, those. But um, I don't, I don't actually, uh, like, uh, I, I'm currently uh, teaching in a school and they have, they're not having a lot of um different methods or they're not they're not having different things which i would like them to have but i've never complained i just use all the conventional methods i come up with games i come up with quizzes i come up with all other things which could help them uh, augment their skill right. do you believe that you are a good teacher why it's um it's a rhetorical question. Like uh, it's very hard to answer such questions. Whether I'm a good teacher or bad, I believe it depends on the student. Um, sometimes, and also the parents. Sometimes, um, if you end up doing good, um, people mm -hmm. like you. Sometimes, when, when you're doing bad, good, people all people might mm -hmm. even dislike you. People might abhor. Uh, your existence just because uh, they don't feel that you're a good person. So um, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I cannot regard myself as a good or a bad teacher, but I try to be a good teacher by trying to understand what the students are requiring, what the parents are requiring, because in the end, uh, we all have to understand that we're not dealing with students only. We're not dealing with teenagers or we're not going to uh, dealing with adults and dealing with children. So children, if I want children to improve, I, I always have to talk to parents. I always have to get them involved in the process or else they'll not know anything and the children might deviate from the path which I'm trying to show them. How do you motivate students? Well, uh, I, have a, I have a way of doing it. Um, it's something which I can only, be, I would only be able to show in the classroom. Um, I I have a very special way of greeting students. Moreover, I mm -hmm. tend to give stories, even if they are 
They're very small motivation stories which the students would be able to understand. Um, I don't go for very motivational speeches because if I'm going to make it complicated, uh, children won't understand anything. So I just come up with small stories related to animals, small stories related to what, how a child was given a toy and all that stuff. So um, I have my own, um, I have some stuffed toys, I have some stars which I purchase. Like every, every time someone performs really well, I give them a star in their homework. I, tend, I, I encourage appreciation a lot. Like if someone would be doing the work, I would be asking other students to uh, applaud that by, um, by just um, clapping or like they're all, I think those things are related to the classroom. Like if you would be in the classroom, you would be able to see how things are done. Right. Do you believe modern technology can help you teach you better? Yes, I believe modern technology can help uh, me teach better, but it's it doesn't have to be only modern technology. If you ask someone, mm -hmm. they say, okay, uh, this, uh, we have di digitalized classrooms, we have uh, we have internet, mm -hmm. we have lap laptops, computers, we have tablets, we have all those things. But like, try to understand, if you're trying to make a child learn, you don't have to just make that person child involved in technology only you have to show that child to um the you should you have to teach that child the essence of real education i think real mm -hmm. education can sh or should be without technology but as the time will progress it should be comp uh, uh, this uh, technology mm -hmm. should be complementing it not that mm -hmm. you just involve them in using a calculator you should teach them basic math, you should teach them basic English, you should be teaching them very basic things from the, in, through the conventional methods, not just going towards uh, things which are, um, which are modern and very modern. Right. What is the most effective way to make children study? If um, I would ask, uh, what is the most, mm -hmm. if, I, if, if I would ask, myself about the most effective way. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, decorum in the classroom. If you're going to show the students or the children that you are a person who is a very friendly one, someone who's a very affable person, but you're a person uh, who is very much adamant mm -hmm. about work, students and teachers, uh, I would say uh, children, and also the parents would understand. If you're going to okay. just say, okay, fine, you did not do your work, it's fine. You're not going to talk to the parents further. Um, you're not going to correspond with the parents and say, okay, fine, he did not or she did not do the work, it doesn't matter. That is where things would go out of hand. You need to understand that you have to constantly see how things are going on. And if you would be able to do it, like mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're given a task, if you have given a task and the child has performed it well, the child would also get a good uh, score in the quiz and the test. In case you're not going to give a follow-up session and see how that mm -hmm. task was done. And if you're going to say, okay, fine, it doesn't matter, just do it next week. It means you are showing apathy towards the problems. It's not that you are, you are a very friendly uh, teacher and you're not going to ridicule or you're not going to mock the child. You have to stop the child whenever the child is going to disturb your method of acquiring education so that is where i think the most effective way is that you have a, like if i ask if i talk about myself i'm a very friendly teacher but whenever it mm -hmm. comes to homework whenever it comes to doing the work all my students know that okay yes we have to do it and whenever they do it i show them so much appreciation and they feel so good that they want to have that same feeling again right what teaching methods might become popular in future um, I think uh, with, with every passing day, people believe that um, technology would be very important, like um, mm. videos, I believe, uh, like recorded videos. When you go into the classroom, you just learn something and when you uh, exit the classroom, even if you were not able to understand something, you cannot just mm -hmm. learn those things again. I think uh, now, uh, because of coronavirus, there were 19 people realized that uh, the whole idea of recorded lectures is very important. It's a, 
a student or the child or a parent would be able to see that lecture again in order to see how things were done. Moreover, I think quizzes, uh, which mm -hmm. which would be uh, which would be related to the concepts which were taught taught in the school. So I think these would become uh, more uh, uh, more popular in the future. Right. What teaching methods do you believe might become obsolete? If I talk about uh, certain things becoming obsolete, and I think um, in the in the near future, um, mm. children uh, mm. children would not be uh, required to do uh, do a lot of uh, I would say uh, homework. I'm not talking mm. about I'm not talking about homework as in not doing any work. But I think uh, some teaching methods like giving them a lot of homework just because you want to make them feel busy or you want to um, like if I if I ask about if I talk about myself or if I talk about the school um, if we are giving one hour of one hour of a lecture or 40 minutes or 30 minutes of lecture we give about 25 to 30 minutes of some sort of activity homework activity which is interesting. Not something which is just going to make the child feel more bored at school at home. So, but I like what what I remember from my uh, siblings or what what I remember from my cousins uh, is that when when I was in Pakistan last month last year, I saw that like they were they were giving them a lot of homework. Like the book was so big. And they were just making them do it because they just did not want them to get in, involved in any other thing. So it should be done, given um, homework should be practical. It should be something which should be interesting. And because um, if it is not interesting, the whole idea of doing that, giving that work would be optional. Right. Okay. Uh, do you always plan your lecture? Yes. Um, as I was telling you earlier. I have done my mm. master's in uh, English literature. I've done ELT course. Mm. So there's, there's basically a module over there in which they teach us how to work with different uh, methodologies. They right. teach us how to plan the lectures. So even right. before I started doing it, I was, I was trained by one of the most, I would say, renowned teachers who taught, taught me how to plan my lectures then. Um, Again, um, all this has to be done in three levels. One is that I learn uh, all these from my degree. Secondly, mm -hmm. the, the school has to tell us what things are to be done, what things have to be covered. And the third level is when I have to make my own personal decisions, like what things am I supposed to do? Like, even if the school is telling me that I have to do something in two, three days, and perhaps mm -hmm. the students are not understanding, I cannot just say, okay, fine, let's do it all these two three concepts in one day it would be unfair so i just give an extra class in order to cover everything which has to be covered right do you constantly uh, acquire skills to be a better teacher yes, this is something i was talking about um, i after every two three months like um, mm -hmm. earlier i did a spoke even though i'm a, i'm very fluent at english i did a spoken english course I also did an, um, mm -hmm. a very rigorous uh, online IELTS preparation mm -hmm. course. Um, like uh, I'm, I'm planning to do a creative writing course in the next three, four months. So I'm a okay. person who would always acquire skills. Right. Do you plan to remain a teacher in future? Why or why not? I would love to remain a teacher. Uh, as I told you earlier, um, I have a very, uh, it's not a short term plan. It's not something I've done because I was not able to do anything else. It's something which I decided to do. And that is something which I believe in doing. So I want to remain a teacher. Right. Should a teacher always be a friendly? Um, like, I just talk about what I was talking about earlier. Like, if you are going to be mm -hmm. friendly at the expense of giving out um, wrong signals, if I talk about wrong signals, I mean that if you're going to show them, okay, fine, don't do the work, I don't really care. That is very, that is unfair. So, but uh, being friendly is very important with children. If I'm going to be, um, I'm, if I'm going to be very much harsh, the, the process 
uh, the process of learning would be halted. So you have to be, um, if I talk about um, uh, a school teacher, I would say a school teacher has to be very much disciplined, has to be very mm -hmm. friendly, and has to be a real motivator. Because when mm -hmm. children are coming, uh, when they're coming from their school, uh, homes, they're missing their homes, they're missing their family members, you can't just treat them badly. You have to be very much friendly, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you have to show them that education is important. You can just say them, okay, don't study today, you're not feeling well. So it's, it's, it's a mechanism. It's something which is, mm -hmm. which is uh, in, in order to deal with this situa situation, mm -hmm. you, you require two things. One is that um, mm -hmm. you have to have good education in which you were mm -hmm. able to acquire those skills and then mm. you need to have experience. And by the grace of Allah, I was able to have both of them. Okay. Okay, why? Yes, sir. thank you. Um, yes, sir, 20 question ho uh, Now uh, I have one question that uh, here are most of the Arabic students and uh, how I deal with the, and the teach. Um, if I teach them language, how I um, teach them? Like uh, I can use bilingual or not? Okay. Um, like um, I'm, I'm uh, right now teaching um, in a in a country where I have to deal with uh, students who my like it's not only with uh, with this country but it it could be the case mm -hmm. with every country. Like uh, if you're okay. teaching a language to someone mm -hmm. who's learning it as a second language, you have to teach them in their own language also. So. Um, I'm very much fluent in Urdu, but I'm also not very bad at Arabic. So, okay. if someone is going to ask me a question, and if that person is not able to understand something, I'm not just mm -hmm. going to say, okay, fine, I'm not going to talk about it in Arabic, I'm not going to explain it. Okay. I'm going to try my best in order to make that thing understandable in English. However, if things don't work out, I would be using the other language too. Right. Okay. Fine. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I'm going to end this meeting because I'm going to end recording for the process of the recording for 15 minutes. Okay. So, I'm going to end the process and I'll send you a message. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.